You would think by now that I would learn to read the books that I have and not to get more from the library. The other day I was complaining about not having many books to haul for you because I honestly don't buy that many books. One, because I have incredible self-restraint and two, because I don't really have the money to spend on books. But the other day I just went to the library and there were of course nine more books on hold for me. I really want to do a haul and I want to show off these because I'm pretty sure I might even read all of them, which is pretty rare because I usually read a mix of like library books, ebooks, audiobooks and the like and not all the ones that I get at one time from the library. I don't exactly know the synopses for most of them. Yeah, I didn't really read the synopses that close before filming this video, but we're just gonna go with it because I really want to show these books off. First up, we have Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover, which I have actually already read. It was the very first one from the stack of books that I picked up. Basically, this is another amazing new adult book from Colleen Hoover, which follows Miles Archer and Tate Collins in a friends with benefits relationship. It's dual perspective, and Miles' story is actually told from six years earlier, and Tate is told from present day, which is actually a really interesting dynamic because it maybe someday it was both characters and and then in a bunch of other Colin Hoover books, it's been one with the female perspective and then the second book with the whole male perspective with the same story. But she finally combined the two perspectives and I really liked the separate timelines for this. This story opens up with Tate who just left her boyfriend and goes to live with her big brother in San Francisco and across the hall there's her brother's best friend, Miles. The two of them have this inexplicable physical and of course a romantic attraction. But the problem is that he has an extremely messed up past and doesn't really want to love or get close to anyone so they agree to have have sex and not have any other expectations for their relationship. Obviously, when that happens, a real emotion start creeping in and love gets ugly. Then I have my current read, which is KZ West's latest fluffy contemporary, and that is The Fill-In Boyfriend. First of all, the cover is really cute, and second of all, it's just a fun story. I'm not quite loving it around a third of the way through, but I think it might grow on me as I go further the story. This book follows high school senior Gia Montgomery, whose lovely older college boyfriend, Don her in the parking lot on the night of her senior proms. Because she's been hyping up her boyfriend to her friend, she doesn't want to go to prom without a date. So in the parking lot, she finds this other guy who she asks to be her fill-in boyfriend for the night. They end up breaking up, and then that seems to be the end of the story. A few days later, after trying to stalk him, his sister comes back to get her to repay the favor when she becomes his date to his ex's graduation party. It just seems like a really cute Casey West Contemporary. Then we have Lying Out Loud by Cody Keplinger, which is actually in my April most anticipated releases, and I synopsized it fully there. I'm still not 100% clear on what this book is about, but of course, it's a Cody Keplinger novel. I absolutely loved The Duff by Cody Keplinger, which I read earlier this year, because it was such a fresh YA contemporary, and it's dealing with the subject matter. It says here it's a companion to The Duff, which I really don't believe, because the characters are not the same, and it just seems like the same world world, maybe, like the same town or city in the same high school. High school senior Sunny Ardmore is an accomplished liar who uses lies to try and control her out of control life, which has been become further complicated by the fact that she is secretly staying every night in her best friend Amy's house because she's been kicked out by her own mother. But when she gets into an online conversation with a stuck up new boy writer who has a crush on Amy, she finds herself caught up in one lie too many. Apparently what happens is that she texts writer pretending to be Amy, so he thinks that she's Amy and of course feelings that involved it's kind of a love triangle, but I have a feeling it's going to be a lot more just hilarious and feel good. Next up, we have V.E. Schwab's latest release, which is A Darker Shade of Magic. This has been hyped up to no end on the bookish community. I read the archive by Victoria Schwab back in February, and I wasn't in love with it, but I did respect and enjoy the writing style so much because it was poetic and beautiful. This is actually one of her adult novels. <laughs> This book follows Kel, who is one of the last travelers slash magicians with the rare ability to travel between parallel universes of London. There's Grey London, which is dirty and boring without any magic. Red London with life and magic, where it's revered. Where Kel was raised along with a Rye Marish, who is the roguish heir to a flourishing empire. And a White London, a place where people fight to control magic, and the magic fights back, draining the city. Kel acts as a Red Ambassador, but he's actually a smuggler getting people from the different Londons because they will do anything to see what they actually are alive. I'm just so excited to dive into this. It seems like such a good historical fantasy which you really can't put your hand on in terms of genre. Then we have another book which is in my April most anticipated releases and that is The Game of Love and 
Luff, Game of Love and Death by Martha Brock and Bro. This just sounds so interesting. It's like kind of like a historical fantasy. It's been compared to the book Thief. It's about two 17 year olds, an African American named Flora and a white boy named Henry. They're both 17 in Seattle. Apparently Love and Death have chosen them as figures and what has to happen is they have to fall in love but obviously there's going to be a lot of trouble both exteriorly and in terms of their own minds for doing this and maybe they don't want to fall in love. I'm just so excited to see how Love and Death play roles in this book. We have actually another V.E. Schwab book which is Vicious. I have actually borrowed this from the library before and I never got around to it for the same reasons I wanted to read Dark Crusade of Magic. I I want to have a V.E. Schwab book in my life because she's praised to no end. This follows two characters named Victor and Eli who originally are arrogant and brilliant college roommates. I'm not exactly sure what this book is about. I've heard a lot of good things about it and that it kind of follows more of the villain complex rather than the hero. I think it's kind of a undecided villain who doesn't quite know what he's doing. And then I have a book that was extremely hyped up from the booktube community and I've never actually read a book by this author but she was praised highly for her last trilogy and that is The Orphan Queen by Jodie Meadows. My friend Nath actually had a very mixed feelings about this. She thought it was not so much fantasy as it was action-packed and fast-paced, but I'm personally in the mood for a good fast-paced fantasy, so I think I might like this. This follows a girl named Wilhelmina who has a hundred identities. She's a princess, she's a spy, she's a threat. Apparently there's forbidden magic and this wraith pours onto the continent and I assume that she has to defeat it. She has to infiltrate the Skyvale Palace with her best friend Melanie. And as a princess, apparently her land was taken over and she wants to get back her throne. So I feel like that she has very strong motivation as a character and that uh, it'll be a very interesting book. I promise this haul is almost over. I did have nine books after all and I talked forever about each one. <laughs> Anyways, next up I've got about the only Ellen Hopkins book I haven't yet read and that is Collateral. I believe this is one of her adult novels plus it follows an adult main character, Ashley, who's a graduate student at San Diego University and she just sees herself as a poetry reader and backup singer but she ends up being a military wife and she's with this guy for five years through four deployments and then she meets this other man who's a college professor and is a lot more steady and just seems like more solid in her life versus a military man. I think it's about her conflicted attraction and sacrifice and just trying to decide your morals and your values because obviously the man she is married to her husband is risking his life for their country. Lastly in this haul we have Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. I've heard so much about Morgan Rhodes as a high fantasy author and since the month of May started I've really gotten back into fantasy and action and just I want to go on some more adventures in some bookish worlds and fall in love with some very swing-worthy guys. This is in a war-torn land following four different characters. Princess Cleo, Rebel Jonas, Sorceress Lu Lucia, and the heir Magnus. They all have different roles and they're fighting on different sides. It seems like there's apparently maybe magic and they all have different motives. I believe this is third person point of view with different POVs from each character. It's kind of how the Heroes of Olympus series is set up. Thank you so much for sticking with me throughout this very long book haul. I know I really should get to my TBR. It's still very, very, very big and I haven't gotten to it. At this point in life, I've branched away completely from blog tours. I don't really quest arcs anymore and I basically read for myself, which is the way I think it should be. If you read because you want to review for publishers or yourself, just do what you want to do and have fun with it because reading is supposed to be for pleasure and the minute it feels like a chore, then it completely loses all of its enjoyment. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this book haul. Tell me in the comments below if you really want me to do more library book hauls because obviously I can't keep them, but I still, of course, love showing off the books I get. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Keep calm, read on, and I'll see you in a video soon. Goodbye!